Okay, this is um, going to be a presentation about threaded fasteners. We just talked about how to drill holes. Now we're going to see what uh, some of the things you can do with those holes. Um, <clears throat> smaller non hex head screws are usually called screws. Um, some references will tell you that if it's over a quarter of an inch in diameter, um, then it's a bolt, usually with a hex head. It's kind of difficult between what's a bolt and what's a screw. Um, my little show and tell video shows an example of one that by one definition would be a bolt, by another would still be a screw. Um, nuts are, of course, those loose pieces. They can be hex, square, or other shapes. Um, screw sizes can be overwhelming, but this is college, so you need to know all of this stuff. <clears throat> These are some very basic different types of screws. Um, your cap screw or your bolt. Um, you'll note the oval head. You'll note the, the next one is what's called a pan head. Um, lag screws, set screws, flat head, self-tapping. Oh, it just gets bigger and bigger. Um, let's look at the different variables within um, machine screws. You've got the drive type, slotted, Phillips, whatever. The head type, pan head, um, flat head. The length, the length is determined by how long the, the fastener will hold, not how, not distant, uh, um, time, but how long the threaded part or useful part of the screw is. You'll see there's actually a little difference in how you measure length. You've got your diameter, um, major and minor. you got your thread pitch, pitch being how many threads per inch. you got material. You can have different kinds of starting threads, different types of threads, all kinds of stuff. Here is um, different drive types, most popular being the Phillips or the slotted, or a combination of the two. And you'll notice the difference between the Fearson and the Phillips. Um, the Phillips has some special grooves in it. It actually is design, was designed for a, um, to be able to use automated screwing equipment on assembly lines. This is much better than a slotted screw. But you've got these tamper-proof deals, you've got all kinds of weird ways and um, stuff that are, are done. And Apple is real big on creating screw heads on their parts so that people can't take them apart except by Apple certified technicians. Um, I showed you some different drives in the little show and tell video. You've got, um, usually you have a small, medium, large of a flat or, or a Phillips, and you want to use the right one. The large Phillips head has almost a flat bottom on it, and the small Phillips will have a very pointy end on it. It's because those screws that are using those sizes have those shapes of um, for their drive parts on their heads. Um, I showed use the right ones. A um, couple of things that people screw up with using screwdrivers. Um, I mentioned about the large Phillips have the flattened tips and they'll try to take a big Phillips and try to get it into a small screw and it doesn't work. Um, large flat driver will mar the surface. Too small, you'll scrip out the you mess with the slots. And um, hex heads can come in English and metric sizes. And there are some metric sizes that are pretty close to English sizes. So that if, whether you're using a metric bolt or a English bolt with metric drive set, um, it 
might work once or twice, but it will eventually tear up the bolt if you don't have the right type of driver. Um, the head types, doesn't matter what they're Phillips or not, um, you have these very different types. Um, you'll notice the difference between the round and the pan head, kind of there in the middle. Um, You might think you, the pan head's got cut off, so it's not going to be as useful. Actually, it is much better to have that little flatted surface, the less rounded part for the drive. Um, you kind of see on the slot that the slot would be kind of big in the middle. Here, with the pan head, it's pretty even all the way around. Um, you have um, that less than sharp points at the top means you don't have rough edges that come in out there. Um, it is the preferred method or type of machine screw that most designers put into their parts if they're unless they're using flatheads and you can see the flathead um, the countersunk screws for or flathead screws um, for flush engagement and some other fun types. Um, okay, here's what I was talking about. The most most engineering designers use pan head screws um, and they work well. You will see in general department stores or hardware stores, they'll have round head, but they're might say round slash pan because your average consumer doesn't know the difference when you order screws for production purposes or for from a real um, fastener provider you want to call them call out pan heads the flat heads have the matching angle for the um, countersink so that they can fit in ovals if you countersink and you have a little bit of screw above it's kind of nice um, I'll put a link here. There's many other places to go look at different types of screw heads. Length. Um, back to those variables I mentioned. You'll notice that the flat head screw measures from the top of the, the fastener to the bottom. Um, you go all the way, top up. For round head or pan head or whatever, you go from the working surface to the bottom. So you're going to be measuring from the working surface to the bottom pretty much for whatever you're going to do. Um, you can see it over on the right. The length is determined from the shelf of a pan head but from the top of a flat head. And you get a good example here of different types of screws. And you've got shafts and shanks and threaded parts and all kinds of other stuff. Okay, type of thread. That's a um, the, the interesting part. You can get metric screws. They all have 60 degree angles. Um, there are some other types of threads that are popular. They made for a real mess in World War II. The Whitworth was the standard in the UK with a 55 degree angle for the screws. Americans came in with their 60 degree angle. Um, the metric um, had been established by then, but <coughs> I was using the 60. But, um, so a nut would kind of fit, but not very well on a but interchanging between the Whitworth and the um, American National Unified System or the Unified National System. Some of these others, the Betris, the Square, the Acme, um, are really for um, other uses, lead screws, um, other situations. If you really get into the details, when you look at um, the angles that come into play here and where you have some clearances and how the calculations are done. It's incredibly 
um, complicated, but so well established that everything's built around this part that um, the distance between the minor and the major is that ratio works no matter how big the, um, the diameter of the thread is. And everybody has to memorize that formula at the top. Oh, no, just kidding. <laughs> but it is very mathematical when it's first laid out. Um, important part here is to look at the um, major and minor diameters. The major diameter is peak to peak distance. Um, how you, and if you come up to a screw and you measure that major diameter, then you can figure out what size it is. Um, the minor diameter is just called out there just to show that that's the solid part of the screw. And as I said, small to large, the ratio of the distance between the major diameter and the minor diameter stay the same. Um, and you have external and internal threads and manufacturing has been around a long time. It has a history of being remarkably sexist. Um, and so you'll hear some guys calling it the, the male part of the threaded fastener or the female part of the threaded fastener for the internal. Um, you know, it's not to be poo-pooing politically correct. I try to I try to be politically correct if you want to call it that. So and call them internal and external. Um, but you'll hear people call them male and female parts. And for those of you women out there, um, there's a lot of sexism to fight about. This is probably not worth fighting over. It, um, unless people are using it in derogatory manner, just shine it on is my opinion. Um, okay, showed you the major diameter, the marginal diameter, the pitch. It has to do with how many threads per inch. If there are 20 threads per inch, you have a pitch of 1 20th. Um, the start is, is important. If you have, you can have some extra leads that make it easier to start, um, but I, I would be an interesting study of, um, for a term paper if this course had term papers. Now what we call this is the Unified National System. And Unified National System has determined that a fastener with a major diameter of 0 0.60 inches is going to be a number zero. If it's got 112 thousandths major diameter, we'll call it a number four. If it's got 164 thousandths, it's called a number eight, and so on. You can see the little chart there that just says the major diameter and what it is called on a number. And um, if you look at the companion piece here that has is this um, screw sizes and, and how what tapping sizes, you'll see that for any one of these, there's at least two. There's a coarse thread and a fine thread. And let's show this by example. If you have a screw and you're told that it's an 832, that means it is has a major diameter um, of 164 thousandths and it has 32 threads per inch. And I happen to know that that is considered a four, a coarse thread. The fine thread for a number eight is an 840 because that has 40 threads per inch. So there's more threads per inch. Here you can see some of those examples. Excuse me, it's an 836, not an 840. Uh, it's 640 and 632. Anyway, you can see the major diameter, and you see the, the difference between the coarse and the fine di minor diameters is slightly different. And that is because um, if you have 
finer threads. They don't go as deep. Um, and this also shows the size of the drill if you're going to tap it. And there's a video, homemade video, of tapping and drilling, and you should have seen that by now. And that was the drill size that he needed for that. In that little homemade video, I was drilling and tapping for a quarter twenty. Um, so I used a number seven drill to drill the hole that I then tapped. Now you can you have access to would would be a real chart, which would show other parts of this, and that is that um, these hole size. The hole sizes shown here are for aluminum. If you're drilling into steel, you want to have a little bit larger hole because you it's harder to cut those threads and not break your tap. So um, a little bit more about that later. Now metric screws. Um, yeah, I guess they're easy to understand. Once you understand the, the, un, the um, unified national system, it's pretty easy to follow. But with metric, um, you have your major diameter and then the pitch. And so an M10 1.5 is, um, they're always called out that way because it's metric, and it has a diameter of 10 millimeters, and the threads are 1.5 millimeters apart. Um, and just in the same way that the American standards, these have um, coarse and fine threads within each diameter, and they are 60 degree angles. And if you look at some of the different types um, and different sizes, and get an example of what's pretty much similar to what the um, kind of make a comparison. That M10 150 um, would be a, equivalent to a 3 8 inch screw and um, particularly a 3 8 16 which is the coarse or 3 8 24 which is the fine and it's roughly the same size as one or the other. Now, like I say, there are different types of bolts, and in general, it's larger than a quarter of an inch with a hex head of some sort. It's going to be a bolt, although you'll see that step bolt. I showed you one of those in a little video. Um, it doesn't have a hex on it, but it does have a square. And that square could go into a T-slot or a square hole that you could in, then um, tighten the nut into. Um, there's just so many types. Now, the nuts um, have, again, there's a lot of them. You got just your standard hex nut. You got some that are a little bit heavier, some that are a little bit thinner, heavy in the jam. Um, very popular these days are nuts that have a nylon insert in it that prevents them from backing out um, a little bit. Wing nuts, cap nuts, um, just tons of them. Get them with built-in lock washers, um, with the K lock nut, um, and the castle or slotted ones. Just tons of them. Taps. Um, showed you a little bit about taps. There's some videos on that. This is the, um, put it in a handle and turn it, and you end up it cuts the threads. Um, it's really handy. Um, you got to have it like this to be able to turn the threads in. There are different types. Um, depending on how much, how many 
threads it is, is to how many starter threads there are. If there's a lot of starter threads, it's easy to use. If there's kind of in the middle there, it's easy to um, kind of easy to get started, but you, you don't have to get cutting at full diameter quicker. And some have very little starting, but that's so that they can tap down to the very bottom of a hole, of a blind hole. Um, these are the different types. The taper has it's seven teeth into it before it's cutting at full diameter. With a plug tap, about four um, turns of the tap would get you cutting to full diameter. Bottom, and you're looking at one. Um, the videos show all this stuff. Um, you can have four or six flutes. Usually it's four or two. You can actually have two, um, very small. Um, and high speed steel or some other high carbon alloy. Um, I mentioned about that chart that had the aluminum um, drill sizes on it and that they would be different if they were doing it for steel. The way a lot of these charts describe that is they say if it's a 75% fit, it's for a soft material. If you want a 50% fit, it's generally into steels. Now you can do a 50%, you can do a 75% fit for steels, but it's a little bit harder and um, you would tend to break the, um, break the tabs off. And one of the old curmudgeons says, if you break the tab off, just throw the part away and start over. He's pretty much right. Um, you can have left-handed taps and left-handed threads. Um, you'll see something that's called a forming tap versus a cutting tap. Um, even the forming taps actually cut, but they tend to try to form the metal as much as actually cut away the metal. Um, I showed you about the captive inserts. The um, You can make a hole and then press in the component and very heavily used in the um, electronics industry. And one little difference of pipe taps and pipe threads, usually there's a little angle to it, a little taper, so that it'll um, help prevent leaks. I'm having you learn the unified national system of threaded fasteners. Um, if you get into a business, and it's quite possible out here in the Central Valley that you will be in a place dealing with pipes and irrigation and all that kind of stuff, you might very well end up having to memorize all the different pipe sizes. It has a similar structure to the screw sizes, just so that if you understand the screw sizes, you'll understand any other organizational um, setup like this. There are a few other ways to connect things. Um, rivets, that is a piece of metal that is bent around on either side of the two pieces of sheet metal that you're holding together, or it could be big pieces. Um, somebody might pick that as a topic to present a video about. Um, you don't think about other well, ways of holding metals together but by using tabs or folds, but look at the ductwork, air conditioning or heating ductwork, and you'll see a lot of the places that are folded together, it's the fold itself that actually connects the pieces together. There's heat shrinks and other stuff, um, but it, sometimes they're very temporary. One or two last things, washers. There's lots of different types of washers. Usually the purpose of a washer is to prevent the nut from marring the surface of the part. Second possible use is to hold the nut or screw in place. And the A, the, the flat washer, is that's its purpose. Um, and, but the others are all some form of lock washer or decorative, 
The last one, the G, is a, it's called a finish washer, and it's just very decorative. But the others are purposefully set up to, um, to hold the, the nuts in place. And internal or external lock, there's really no difference um, between the holding power of an internal lock or an external lock. Two last things, retaining rings. Um, you got to hold a ball bearing in place. You're going to use a retaining ring. It's going to be something that kind of snaps into place. If you look down at the drawing and the part that's called out with a certain diameter, that would be, um, it's a cutaway, so you only see the top and bottom would go completely around the shaft. And that would hold that shaft in place against that um, hold, hold it in place so that it would um, be able to spin freely but not um, not come out. You've got to have a way of holding it in place and it's with the retaining ring. You see an example of that on the right. Um, you can see the two little holes. That ring would pop out. It's similar to a type A ring and then you could take that bearing out or put it back in, just in place. That bearing can't come out. And um, I mentioned the thing about a castle washer and a cotter pin, using a cotter pin to hold it in place. Here's an example of it. The, the shaft in the middle um, this is in some sort of automotive application. Um, I've had to do a lot with travel trailers. Put that castle pin in there, and then you put the cotter pin in, and um, I guess my thing does not, uh, anyway, it will hold it in place and um, until you pull it back out. And that's it for fastening things together.